Never mind the Westminster rumours, the Fogarty family WhatsApp group has fired up, so uh, there's bound to be a general election. Natasha Clark, LBC's political editor, is here. Look, we've been here before with gossip and rumours about whether a general election is about to be called or when it's going to be called. Is it different today? It feels different, Sheila, and that's for a number of reasons. And, you know, just a few hours ago, I was reluctant to believe all of this feverish speculation that's popping up in WhatsApp groups across the nation, including your own. (laughs) Um, But look, all the signs, I think, now are pointing to the fact that the Prime Minister is preparing to call a general election as soon as tonight. I think that's for a number of reasons. They all seem to be pointing in the same direction. Um, Number 10 uh, lobby briefing at lunchtime just after Prime Minister's questions was probably the clearest sign yet. On the record, they do not want to deny the fact that there could be an election called later today. And usually, Number 10 are the kind of people that usually would slap down such feverish speculation. They'd reply to your WhatsApp messages with laughing face emojis and say, oh, I haven't heard that, or that sounds rubbish, or just slap it down in some sort of way. And they're not doing so. Everybody in number 10 has gone into a sort of bunker this morning. We haven't heard from any of them apart from at that lobby briefing that we had this lunchtime. And you heard the Prime Minister laugh at Stephen Flynn and Prime Minister's questions when he did suggest that that could be the case. The second uh, bit of information that we can talk about that uh, is pointing to the fact that the Prime Minister might be about to call an election is that David Cameron, the Foreign Secretary, is flying back this afternoon from Albania. He is deliberately cutting a trip that he had had planned for a number of days, potentially weeks, to Albania. He's flying back this afternoon specifically for this cabinet meeting that we're told the Prime Minister is holding today at 4pm at number 10. So it just begs the question, why on earth would the Foreign Secretary be coming back uh, so soon if there wasn't something uh, to say? And like I say, number 10 usually decide to do their best to dampen any speculation if indeed there is something going on. They usually tell us, no, you're wrong. Uh, Even off the record, they would not be drawn on what on earth is happening. They just said repeatedly again and again, we've said it will be in the second half of the year. The Prime Minister has said that. And look, if they call an election today... July is the second half of the year, isn't it? July is the second half of the year. And we are looking now, if you called an election today, it would be the end weeks of June, early weeks of July. We could be looking at a July 4th election. The other speculation that's uh, in Westminster today is that potentially the Prime Minister could be calling an election for later on this year and just announcing the date. Now, I think that's probably a little bit less likely because it makes the Prime Minister look like a bit of a lame duck, doesn't it? And you've got four months where he essentially is in power um, sorry, in charge, but he's not although, in power. Although, although if he if it's not that, he still is in that position, really, isn't it? it it's going to if if it's not now, it's going to be autumn. He's ruled out January, I think, didn't he, a week or so ago. Um, mm-hmm. So that's kind of the position he's in. I, I guess announcing an, an October date or a November date does formalise that position. Uh, clearly, it would, but. He's kind of in that position already in many ways, isn't he? He is. We're, we're already in a long campaign anyway, aren't we? We saw those speeches from the Prime Minister and from Keir Starmer yesterday. Mm. The campaign is very much already in full swing uh, as as far as Westminster uh, is concerned. Another couple of clues that we've had today that it could be all on is the uh, the way that the government and the and Number 10 Downing Street have reacted to the news that we've had, the inflation news. Obviously, it was uh, it's now got around 2%. They're saying that it's back to normal. One of the, uh, the, the things the Prime Minister's press secretary said earlier today was, just think, you know, we're in a good position, I think was the, the phrase that they'd used. Um, and obviously, we're now seeing the economy starting to grow. The ONS, seems, sorry, uh, the official forecast is saying it's going gangbusters. I mean, whether you believe that or not, that's uh, but it, that's yeah, what they like to talk about. They do. But I mean, you know, it's quite easy to, to, to tackle the inflation claim um, uh, by just saying that that's fascinating, that it's gone. It's great that it's going down. It's good that it's gone back down to two point whatever percent. Um But food prices, for example, are still 30 percent higher than they were in 2021. The cost and living standards are are worse now than they were at the beginning of this parliament. You know, he's got a lot of economic woes still to deal with, hasn't he? Of course. But but some people are saying and the, the theory among some MPs and one former minister that I was speaking to earlier today was I think this might be the best it's going to get this year. Don't give it time to get worse. Yeah. Exactly. In, this, in essence, you know, we obviously are waiting or now we're not waiting for inflation to fall. We don't think it's going to fall any further. In fact, some economists think it's going to tick back up at the end of the year. We obviously are waiting for those interest rate cuts to come. They might not come. Um, this economic news may be the best and the last set of economic finan- financial uh, statistics that the government has got to point to between now and October to, to suggest that things are on the up and that they can paint this picture that things are going to feel a little bit better. Another argument for going earlier in the summer is obviously Rwanda. We're expecting 
interesting uh, if uh, the weather, obviously not great today, but if it continues to be sunny, if it continues to be uh, to, to, to see calmer waters, then we might expect the number of small boats across the channel to go up. That's not good for the Prime Minister. If those numbers continue to rise, obviously we are awaiting those Rwanda flights going off. If you saw a Rwanda, Rwanda flight go off in the middle of a campaign, if you were a Downing Street strategy team, you might hope that that might give you a little bit of a poll I boost it, or bounce if, I if indeed it, uh, it, it does work. I hope it rains frogs on them. <laughs> I hope it rains frogs.